Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So welcome to the Ultimate Technical Analysis Trading Course. So here's the thing, right? Many traders, they use technical analysis in their trading, but they are, they are not getting the results that they want. In fact, they are losing money right, consistently by following right, the so-called textbook trading setups. Why is that? And the reason is simple, right? Let me explain. Let's say you have the keys to a Ferrari, right? And you give these keys to a 13-year-old kid. Do you think the kid, right, the 13-year-old kid can drive that car and win an F1 championship? No, right? Why is that? Well, even though the kid has the right tool, he does not have the adequate knowledge to use the tool to get the results that, you know, you want to win an F1 championship. And it's the same for trading. You might have the right tools in front of you, indicators, chart patterns, etc. But if you do not know how to use it correctly, you're not going to find success in the financial markets. So that's why in this course, right, I'm going to break it down to you, right? Technical analysis, what are these tools, how to use them correctly, how to combine them and find success in the financial markets. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. So let's begin. So technical analysis, right, generally, it can be broken down into a, a few categories. I call them number one, drawing tools. Number two, candlestick patterns, chart patterns and indicators, okay? So the first thing that you must understand when you are using technical analysis is you must know the purpose of your tools. What is it for? Okay, so generally, right, technical analysis, the tools, right, have one of these few purposes. Number one, to help you understand the market condition. Maybe it's in a range, maybe it's in a trend. Number two, it helps you define an area of value on your charts, right? Maybe like, you know, support resistance, trend line, trend channel. Where is an area of value on the chart? Where do you want to buy low and sell high? technical analysis can help you with it. Number three, it can serve as an entry trigger to enter a trade. For example, the market conditions have all lined up. Now you're just waiting for a trigger, something to you know get you into a trade. Technical analysis can do that for you as well. And the fourth thing is that you can also learn how to combine these tools, right, to find high probability trading setups and even develop, right, trading strategies on your own. So this is the purpose of technical analysis, to understand your, your uh, tools to understand the purpose of it, right? And they generally, right, is meant to help you understand the market condition, define the area of value, and uh, be, to, or rather to serve as an entry trigger to your trade. So first thing, right, what are drawing tools? This is the first category of technical analysis that we want to talk about. What are drawing tools? Drawing tools can be stuff like trend line, right? Trend channel, support and resistance. These are all drawing tools in technical analysis. Of course, there are more, but I'm just listing out the uh, three common ones, right? And they are useful, right, to help you find an area of value on the chart. For example, if you want to buy low and sell high, how do you do that? Refer to your drawing tools. They will help you, you know, identify levels or area on your chart, you know, where you can actually buy low and sell high. So here's an example of support resistance. You can see that over here, this is what traders call as uh, resistance, right? Over here, price tested once, tested twice, right? Test bounce off support once, support twice, support thrice. Then it broke down support, retest this level, which was actually a prior support, did a brief rally, break down support, right? I tested a level that you can't see over here. Then now it goes back higher, retest previous resistance, now act as support, right? Then it hit down lower, retest this support, slight bounce towards this resistance, break down, retest prior support turn resistance, and, and you get my point, right? So these are all support and resistance on your chart. So the other thing is trend line. So trend line is simply put, right? It's uh, it's not horizontal like support resistance. It's diagonal. So you can see that this line over here is diagonal, right? It's slant, slanting down lower. Again, you can use it to identify uh, areas of value, right? You can see that this, if you want to short, right? This would be a good area to look at since the price now is at uh, it has bounced off repetitively once here, twice, thrice, four, five. So you know, you know that if you want to sell, this is pretty much a good level to sell since the market has respect this uh, trend line in the past. Trend channel is just a, a slight variation of it. So trend channel has two diagonal lines, this one here and this one here. So we call this whole thing, right? These two lines are trend channel where you notice that sometimes the price can bounce up and down within the channel. Again, it's used to help you identify an area of value. So now, how do you draw these tools correctly? Because if you think about this, these tools are really important. It can help you, you know, identify uh, what is low and what is high. So the important thing right now is to how do you draw your levels correctly? So I'm going to share with you a very simple three-step 
technique number one zoom out your charts you want to zoom out your charts so you can see you know the so-called the big picture right all the uh relevant number of candles in it because if you only have like 20 candles on your chart it's going to be difficult to draw those levels so zoom out your charts i typically have about 400 400 plus candles on my chart if i'm not wrong it's about 470 for me right so that's how i'm how much i zoom out uh number two you want to draw the most obvious levels on your chart if it's there it's there if you have to you know squint your eyes and find the level it's not there right so just ignore that and the third thing is you want to adjust it to get the most number of touches so let me explain with you uh using an example shall we so this one over here, okay, let's see, right? So this is a uh, New Zealand Yen. So what I'll do is usually this is a trading view platform. I reset my chart and I like to uh, scroll down my mouse five times, right? One, two, okay, let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five. So you can see that this is how much information that I want to see on my chart. So this is where, you know, you can see uh, much more data and you can ad identify, right, clearly which are the obvious points that you want to be drawing. So what I can see over here, let's say, for example, let's draw a trend line. We use the same technique. Zoom out your chart, the first thing. Second thing, draw the most obvious level. So where is the most obvious level? Let's say we are going to draw a trend line. Okay, I see this one over here. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing, adjust it to get the most number of touches. So as you can see, right, I am not going to, you know, draw my trend line in this manner where I, I, where I connect this high over here. Because if I were to connect this high over here, right, I am foregoing the touch over here and this touches over here, here, and here. So what I'll do is I'll adjust it lower, okay, and get as many touches as possible. So now you can see that if I were to draw it in this manner, I have this one over here, one touch, two. This, although it, it break above and close below it, right, let's ignore this, three, four, five, and six, right? Even though this isn't at a false break as well, but I'll consider this as a touch. And this one, I will treat this as a touch as well when it breaks out and it eventually goes back below the trend line. So you can see that over here, this trend line has pretty much encompassed the most number of touches. So this is what I mean by, you know, adjust it to get the most number of touches. And one trick to share with you is that trend line, even though it's called a line, it's not really a line, it's an area. So what you can do is you just click on this, Control C, Control V, you have another parallel line out. So what you can do is then you just shift this parallel line, right? And now this time around, you can just put it, again, get the most number of touches at this one over here, one touch, two touch, and here, right now you have a trend line area on your chart. So you know that if the price comes over here into this trend line, right, it's an area where there is potential shorting opportunities, right? Using the three-step technique. Number one, zoom out. Number two, draw the most obvious levels. And number three, adjust to get the most number of touches. So let's do one more example before we move on, shall we? Uh, let's see uh, what else. Let me just search for platinum. I think there's something that we can draw here. Uh, futures, platinum futures. Okay, same concept over here. Okay, so this time around, I'm going to draw a trend line again. I've already zoomed out the chart. So again, just draw this one, connect the most number of touches. Let's say for the first time I draw, I draw it like this. And I see, hey, it's only touched one time and two time, right? I want to get the most number of touches. So I'm going to adjust this trend line down lower. To somewhere here about here okay so at this point you can see that i have got one touch two three four and five not too bad right i definitely don't want to go in any deeper right like so for example if i go into here right then this part is pretty ugly it moves up a bit this one has pretty much you know broke out already so let me just you know get the most number of touches right by moving back previously to this area here okay and again i can just use a control z control v approach Right, and encompass uh, this this new highs over here, which is looking something like this. Right now, you have this area of your trend line on your chart now, right? Which is uh, this is the area where you could potentially look to sell in the markets. So, when do I tell that the trend trend line is broken? Right. So now, if the price right were to you know break above this uh this trend line on top here breaks up, right? Chances are the trend line is over, right? Because you're not just going to adjust this trend line to encompass uh, let's say a new high because you know that's like you know uh, force fitting in right the reason why i draw adjusted here right to somewhere about here because i know that there's another level over here that i missed out earlier so if i were to encompass it slightly up further right i pretty much can get this level over here and this one over here okay so there's a little bit of element of discretion to it right but generally if you follow the three steps i shared with you right you should be able to draw good levels on your chart so with that said, right, let's uh, move on right now that you know how to draw your levels correctly. Let's do a quick recap, right? Number one, 
drawing tools, you can draw stuff like trend line, trend channel, support and resistance. Those are drawing tools that you can, you know, uh, draw on your charts. It helps you to identify what is low, what is high, so you can buy low, sell high in the markets. All right, how to draw, just zoom out your charts, right? Draw the most obvious levels and adjust to get the most number of touches, right? The concept is the same, whether you're drawing support resistance, trend line, trend channel. Okay, so moving on, right? Let's talk about candlestick pattern, right? What is a candlestick pattern? So candlestick is simply a method, right, of reading a price chart. You would actually read it based on the four things, right? There, It shows you the open, the high, the low, and the close. That's what a candlestick chart would show you. So it's useful, right, as an entry trigger, okay? Candlestick pattern is useful as an entry trigger. So how do you actually you know, read a candlestick pattern, right? So let me share with you. So when you see candlestick pattern, they are generally either red or green color. Sometimes it can be black or white, but most common is green or red. So for example, this one over here, you can see that this level here is the where the price opened or where the market opened for that time period. This over here is the low of the session. This over here is the high of the session. And this is where the price has closed, right? This, this level over here, it's the closing price. This one over here, this black line is what we call the upper shadow or upper wick. This is what we call the lower shadow or lower wick. And the green colored uh, portion is what we call the body of the candle. So when you see a red candle, the open is the opposite, right? The open now is at this point over here. The close is at the bottom. This is the low of the session and this is the high of the session. So one thing to bear in mind is that here, the open is at the bottom, the close is above. So this is why we, is what we call a higher close. That's why it's green. It's bullish. For this one is what we call a lower close. So this is where the price close below the open. That's why it's so-called bearish, right? A red color candle. So that's how you read a candlestick chart, how you read a candlestick pattern. So moving on, right? I want to share with you about how you actually interpret this, right? So there are two things that you want to pay attention to, right? The body, okay, that's the first thing. And the body relative to the wick, this is important. So the body, right, tells you who's in control. So if you see a big green body, it tells you that the buyers are in control. That is why the market has opened over here and closed near the highs, right? This is the open, right? And you see that this is the wick, right? The upper wick, right, is a sign of rejection. And you can see that re rejection is quite small, actually. That is why your wick is quite short. Moving on, right, this is another example. You still have a body, but this time around, notice the body is much smaller compared to the wick, right? This is uh, telling you that the buyers open at this level and close at this level over here. This is the close. This is the open. However, if you look at the wick, right, it's so much longer compared to the size of the body. This tells you that there is strong price rejection in the market. At one point in time, right, the, the market, the price was, was actually trading at this highs. And then the sellers came in and pushed price down all the way down lower, finally closing right at this level over here so this tells you that there is strong selling pressure over here that's why you got this long price rejection this strong price rejection this long upper wick so this is a uh, what you might this is what you need to pay attention to when you are you know trading with candlestick patterns right pay attention to the body pay attention to the wick and pay attention right to the size of the body relative to the wick right this is, tells you that there is price rejection in the markets so with that said, right, let's have a look at you know, three of the more popular candlestick patterns and the meaning behind it. They are usually reversal patterns, and I think that they are really useful, right, to help you uh, serve as an entry trigger in your trading. So first one is what we call the engulfing pattern, right? Notice that this one over here, the uh, price open at this level, and it closed near the lows, right? The next candle, right, the price open here, and the buyer stepped in and push con take control and push price all the way up higher, right? Finally closing near the highs all right this shows you a sign of strength right the buyers took control and you know push price up higher so this is a bullish reversal pattern otherwise known as a bullish engulfing pattern second one over here notice that here uh, buyers are in control open here and it closed near the highs but the next candle the sellers took control right they opened near the highs and smashed the price lower driving it down near the low so this is a reversal towards the downside we call this the bearish engulfing pattern. Okay, so this is a bullish engulfing. This is a bearish engulfing. The next pattern I want to share with you is hammer and shooting star. Right, hammer, right? It's not the, the Marvel Thor's hammer, right? It's a, It looks like a hammer, but this is a sign of strength. Okay, notice the price open at this level over here. Then at one point in time, right, the sellers, they were actually in control. That's why you have this long lower wick. The, the sellers came in, pushed price down all the way down lower. 
Finally, it reached the selling climax. The buyer said, hey, enough is enough, right? I'm going to take control and push the price up higher, right? So the buyer stepped in, you know, buy, 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 all the way up towards the high of the candle and finally closing near the highs. So this is why you get uh, this hammer pattern, right? This over here, remember, we mentioned earlier looking at the uh, body relative to the wick. Notice the wick is so much longer compared to the body. This is a rejection of lower prices, okay? And... Just the opposite, this is a rejection of higher prices, right? Notice the price opened here. Buyers were in control initially, came up, pushed the price up towards these highs. Then the sellers took charge, pushed the price down lower, finally closing near the low. So this is a rejection of higher prices. So this is what we call a hammer. This is a shooting star. Moving on, morning and evening star. So this one over here, right? Again, it's another reversal pattern, right? Notice the sellers, right, were in control, closing near the lows. And you have this next candle over here is what we call a doji, an indecision in the markets. So doji looks like a cross, right? And you, the reason why you got this straight line over here is because the open and the close are at the same price level. So there is no body to, 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 to actually be illustrated because the open and the close, they are at the same price level, right? So this represents indecision in the market, right? The sellers are not winning the war. The buyers are not winning the war. They are pretty much in equilibrium. And then the third candle is where the, the buyers stepped in, right? Open over here, right? And finally closing near the highs, all right? This is a bullish reversal pattern, a morning star. Okay, and evening star is just the opposite. You can see over here, buyers were in control. They opened near the lows and closing near the highs. Then you have this indecision in the markets where, you know, buyers and sellers, they are in equilibrium. Then finally, right, sellers took charge, they opened at the highs and closing near the lows, right? And this is why we call this a, a evening star. It's a bearish reversal pattern signaling that the market could, right, head lower from here. Okay, so with that said, right, let's do a quick recap, right, about candlestick patterns that you've learned so far. Number one, candlestick, right, is a method of reading a price chart, namely using the open, high, low and close. Number two, it's useful as an entry trigger to get you on board the trade, right? Candlestick pattern is useful for this. And uh, these are a few of the candlestick patterns that we have went through. There are more definitely, right? But again, I just want to share with you the, uh, the few common ones because if you can read these patterns, you can read any candlestick patterns, right? The three main things to take note is number one, the body, the wick, and the body relative to the wick. Once you master that concept, any candlestick patterns you can read in the markets, right? You don't have to memorize, you know, 101 uh, different candlestick patterns, right? So that's... Uh, uh, the candlestick section, right? Moving on, right? Let's talk about chart patterns, right? So candlestick pattern, you can, if you think about this, is individual uh, uh, bar on your chart. So a chart pattern, right, encompasses more candlestick pattern to form a chart. So a chart pattern is simply a quick assessment for the strength, weakness, or equilibrium in the market. So right, this is what a chart pattern is used for. It tells you whether you know the buyers are in control, tells you whether sellers are in control, or whether you know both of them are pretty much in equal strength, right? So they sort of uh, summarize a number of candlestick patterns, right, to give you the big picture. So this can be used as an entry trigger and to understand what is the current market condition, right? So the first pattern I want to share with you is an ascending triangle pattern. This is a sign of strength, okay? So an ascending triangle looks like this, right? You can see, connect the highs over here, okay? And I notice this over here. So again, the way you draw your ascending triangle is the way you do your drawing tools. You're simply drawing a resistance on your chart and a trend line. This over here is the upward trend line and this over here is the resistance, right? The, apply the same concept to how you draw your drawing tools. So over here, you can see that you know, one touch, two touch, three touch. I know the, the drawing is horrendous. I agree my, my drawing is bad, right? But the main thing is to, to understand the concept behind it. And this pattern over here, right? This one over here. Right, it's what we call an ascending triangle. This is a sign of strength because if you notice, right, you have a higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows coming into an area of resistance. This tells you that the buyers, they're willing to buy at this higher prices. So this is a sign of strength. Okay, we won't talk about the exact strategy on how to trade this yet, right? But I just want to, you know, share with you the concept, right? The idea behind ascending triangle, right? And the meaning behind it. Okay, so this is for ascending triangle. The opposite is what we call a descending triangle. It looks something like this, right? A descending triangle. Then again, you connect the lows, right? You can possibly connect the highs as well. So this is what we call a descending triangle. This is a sign of weakness as it tells you the sellers are able to sell at lower and lower prices, right? That's why you have lower highs on your chart. 
The next pattern is what I call the flag pattern, another useful pattern to know as a trend continuation trade. So a flag pattern is pretty much this one over here. Price breaks out higher, then you have this pullback, okay? So the flag pattern is pretty much this portion over here where it looks somewhat like a flag, right? Uh, you know, waving left and right. So the flag pattern, the key thing that you want to take note is the retracement, the candle. You want to see small bodied retracement as the candle. So it tells you that, you know, the sellers, they're not able to push price lower. So that's why your, your, your range of the candles are quite small. Okay, so this is what we call a flag pattern. This is a bullish flag pattern as prior to this uh, formation of the flag, right? You have this uh, strong upward momentum. The opposite is what we call a bear flag pattern like this. Okay, this is called a bearish flag. Right, and if the price breaks down lower, there could be a possible setup to go short. But again, we can talk about that later on. Okay, so this is flag pattern. And the other one is what we call a head and shoulders pattern. This is a, a sign of weakness in the market because if you think about this, the price hit higher, then retrace. Made another move higher, breaking off the previous high, and then retrace. Right, right now you try to make higher, to, to hit higher, but it couldn't even retest back this prior high. So this is a sign of weakness telling you that the buyers, right, they weren't as strong compared to the previous uh, high that was made, right? Recall that it broke out of this prior high, but at this point in time, right, it failed to even break out of the prior high. And now it retraced back towards this area of support, otherwise known as a neckline. So head and shoulders, usually it's a, a sign of weakness in the market. It doesn't mean that you go short immediately, but it's telling you that the buyers, right, they're slowly losing steam, right? They're losing uh, strength. Right, so this is what a head and shoulders pattern tells you, okay? And the, and the opposite of this pattern is what we call the inverse head and shoulders pattern, like this. Okay, this is the neckline. So again, you see sellers in control push down, push the price lower, retrace. At this point in time, push the price down lower again, taking out this prior low. Then it retraces back towards this neckline, and the, the the third attempt, right? Again, they are not as strong as the previous selling pressure. It could even retest or rather break down below this low before it finally go back higher, retesting this area of support and neckline. So this tells you that the sellers, right, their strength is getting weak, right? So this is what we mean by the inverse head and shoulders pattern. So with that said, right, recap, right, to what chart pattern does, right? Number one, it's a quick assessment of the strength, weakness or equilibrium in the market. Useful as an entry trigger and to understand market conditions. Like for example, uh, we shared earlier, right, head and shoulders, right? It's telling you that the buyers are getting weak. Ascending triangle pattern is telling you that the buyers are getting stronger because they are willing to buy you know, at these higher prices. So it's useful right, to help you uh, understand right, what is the current market condition. Right, we share with you, uh, I share with you common chart patterns like the ascending triangle, the flag pattern, head and shoulders. There are more patterns out there, trust me, but again, it all boils down to just reading the swing high and swing lows in the market. <laughs> That's really all you need. right? So it, uh, there's no point in me you know, going through the 101 patterns out there. Okay, so now that you have a good idea of, you know, what are chart patterns, what they're used for, let's move on, right, and talk about indicators, right? This is something that I know many of you are just interested in, right? How to use indicators, right? So let me share with you what an indicator is about and the purpose and what it's for. So it's basically, right, a tool that takes historical data and apply a formula to it, right? In, if, in fact, if you think about most indicators, this is what they do. They take the historical data, whether is it volume, whether is it price, apply a mathematical formula to it, and that's where your indicator gets its line, all the different colors and stuff like that. So the thing that it does is that it helps you summarize the price, the, the market's price action, right? If you think about moving average, what, what, does it, what does it do? It simply summarizes the past prices to tell you whether the market is in an uptrend range and, and stuff like that. So it's like, indicator gives you a quick summary of what's going on in the market, okay? And it can be used as an entry trigger, can use to help you identify an area of value, and can help you understand market conditions. So indicator, they are useful, right? If you know how to use them correctly, right? So this is where you know, you know, some traders may think, ah, indicators are lagging, right? You know, they 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 are not useful, right? Can't work because it's lagging. No, right? In fact, if you look at your charts, those are also lagging uh, data. It has already happened, right? So the reason why traders don't find success with indicators is getting they don't understand the purpose of it, right? And they're using it wrongly. But don't worry. In this section, right, I'm going to share with you the different types of indicator, a few popular ones, right, how to use it, right, and you would see indicators in a different light. So first one, right, moving average, very straightforward. What is it? So moving average, right, you know it's a, it's a line on your chart, right? How it's being calculated is, again, let me share with you. Let's say uh, a five-period moving average. How we get its value is, let's say you have the last five candles, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So what it does is that it takes the closing price of the last five candles, right, 
add up all the closing price and you divide by five, divide by five. Okay, and let's say you get a value called X, right? So this is where your chart, right, will be shown as one one dot on your or chart. On, let's say one dot on your your chart. Let's call it X. Okay, let's say another candle is formed, the sixth candle again. What you'll do is you'll take the five recent candles from here all the way to here and then divide by five. And let's say now this time around you get X plus one. Let's call it X one. Okay, then you, you draw another dot on your chart, right? And this time around we call it X one. Okay, and you do the same thing, you get X2345, and what it, the, the tool does is just connect the dots, and that's how you get your moving average on the chart. Of course, there are many variations of it. You can use the high, you can use the low, you can use the, the weighted the, uh, version of the high-low, etc. But this is the core concept behind it. You're just you know summarizing the past uh, price action, the past data, to give you a, a smooth line on your chart. Okay, so this is how moving average is uh, calculated. So what can it be used for? Number one, a trend filter. Moving average can be served as a trend filter to tell you, you know, what is the direction of the trend. So if you, let's say, for example, this over here is the 200 period moving average. So let's say if the price is above the 200 period moving average, right, you want to have a long bias. This means that I would only be looking to buy, right? I won't look to short, but I only look to buy. Okay, so this can give you a, a bias, or rather, or rather to act as a trend filter so you know whether you should be staying long or staying short. So... Vice versa, right? If the price, let's say now, is below the 200 MA, then you want to know that, hey, you only want to be shorting the markets. You don't want to be long. Okay, so this is how a moving average can help you serve as a trend filter. Moving average also can act as an area of value, similar to, you know, the trend line support resistance concept we spoke of earlier. You can see that this is an area of value, right? The 50 MA, right? Price has, you know, bounced off multiple times, right? Of the uh, 50 MA, as you can see over here. So moving average can help you define your area of value on your chart. Next indicator, let's talk about the average true range, right? So, so average true range is again uh, an indicator that helps you measure volatility in the markets. So you can see that over here, right, an ATR indicator is this one at the bottom here, right? This is the, the, the indicator. So one thing to note is that it measures volatility, not the trend. So you can see that over here, uh, this one, the market hit down lower, but this indicator is pointing higher. So it doesn't tell you what's the direction of the trend. It measures the volatility. And uh, I don't want to go into the calculation here because it can be a bit complex, but the general core idea is this, is that as the range of the candles, right, the range of the candles here to here is the range, and here to here is the range, here to here is the range, and here to here is the range of this one. As the range of the candles get larger, your ATR value would increase because they are measuring volatility in the market. So as the range of your candles gets smaller, your ATR values will decrease. So this is the core idea behind the ATR indicator. So what is it for? Well, it can help you uh, set a proper stop loss, right? Say, for example, this chart over here. Notice that this market is somewhat in a range, right? And uh, often traders, they'll just set their stop loss, you know, below this low and below this low. And you can see that if you do that, right, you're going to get stopped up on this candle over here because the market has a tendency to just, you know, sweep the stops below support and sweep the stops above resistance. So it's never a good idea always to just, you know, set your stop loss below obvious lows and above obvious highs. What you can do, right, is to use the ATR indicator to give you some buffer to your stop loss. For example, right, this ATR value right now is 57. Let's say you want to go long in this market, right? You want to buy maybe because... There is this uh this uh, reversal pattern market is now closed higher. You want to go long. But you've learned earlier that you don't just want to put your stop loss smack below this low because the market can just come down lower and hit your stop loss. So what you can do is use the ATR indicator. The value is 57. So let's say, for example, the low over here is X, right? What you'll do is you take X minus 57, right? And let's say you get Y. So the, your Y value, let's say, will be somewhere about here. This is where you set your stop loss, right? So from distance from this low to Y is your ATR. Okay, so this is how you actually give your stop loss some buffer, right? So you don't get stopped out, you know, often. So this is a very powerful trick that you can use, right? To set a proper stop loss. Uh, another thing that the ATR indicator can do is the, what I call the volatility cycle. So here's the thing, right? The market volatility is always changing. It moves from a period of high volatility to low volatility, right? And if you ask me, the best times to trade breakout is during a low volatility period because you know that when the market is in a low volatility period, right, volatility is about to expand soon. If you can get your entry to break out during this low volatility period, this means that, you know, you can actually expect a big move to come your way. 
So this is why, you know, often like, you know, for example, Bitcoin, right? When the market hit almost 20,000, when there's so much volatility in the market, that's when traders start to come in the market. It's usually uh, one of the worst times to enter because, you know, you're not going to expect the kind of volatility to run forever. The market might reverse, volatility might die down, and you're pretty much, you know, buying near the high. So usually when you want to trade breakouts, usually when you want to enter your trades, it's best to do so during a uh, low volatility period where no, not many traders are aware of it. The retail are still unaware. The news, the media are still, you know, not looking at the market. So this is the best time to actually, you know, enter your trades. So that aside, right, you can look at over here, Euro dollar, multi-year low volatility over here on this uh, weekly time frame. Then it broke down, right, and it collapsed, I think, to, to quite low, right, in 20, 2014, 2015, or over here you can see. Okay, so low volatility period followed by uh, an increase in volatility. Okay, so that pretty much sums up uh, the ATR indicator. Okay, later we'll revise this. We'll, we'll look at this back again and how you can actually use this as part of your trading strategy. But for now, uh, let's move on and talk about the Donchian channel, right? So Donchian channel is again another indicator and this one is relatively straightforward, right? No complex math, right? This over here, the upper there's uh, three lines, upper band, middle band, and lower band. The upper band is simply the 20 day, uh, 20 day high. This one over here is the 20 day low. And this middle band is simply the average between the 20 day high and the 20 day low. So this is where you get your Donjian channel having uh, three lines on the chart. So how do you actually use this indicator, right? There are a few ways. Number one, it can serve as an entry trigger, right? So what happens is that if the price breaks, right, above the uh, blue line, it's telling you that it has made a new 20 day high. So if you're trading breakouts, this can serve as an entry trigger to get on board the breakout or get on board the trend. So first thing a Donchian channel can do is to uh, act as an entry trigger. Second thing you can do is to act as a trend filter, simply like a moving average, right? If the price is below the middle band, okay, right? The price is below it, you look for shorting opportunities only. You don't want to buy, but rather stay short. And it can also be used as a trailing stop loss, right? So for example, let's say you are long in the market, you buy the breakout of this 20-day uh, high, the highs of the upper band. You can trail a stop loss, right, and exit the trade only, right, if the price, you know, hits the lower band or rather the 20-day low in this example, okay? So this is another way, you know, the Donjian channel can serve as a trailing stop loss. Okay, so quick recap, right, we have talked about indicators in this section. Number one, right, indicators, they pretty much summarize the market price action, right, by applying a formula to the uh, historical data. Can be used as an entry trigger identifying an area of value and even to help you understand the market condition. So we talk about moving average, it can help you trade with the trend, help you define an area of value. In fact, it can even help you trail your stop loss. I didn't include that because uh, uh, the Donjian channel pretty much meet that needs, right? But moving average can do that. Average true range can help you set a proper stop loss, help you, you know, define the market's volatility. And the Donjian channel, right, help you, uh, can serve as an entry trigger, trend filter, and a trailing stop loss. Okay, so you can see that, uh, of course, this is not comprehensive, but the main thing that I'm trying to bring across here is to teach you the purpose of your indicators. There are more purpose, definitely, I do agree, right? And I didn't cover all of them because, again, I want you to explore on your own and think on your own. But generally, uh, these few indicators, these are their core purposes behind it. So now, at this point in time, right, we have covered a lot in the last 33 minutes, right? Uh, we talk about uh, chart patterns, candlestick pattern, indicators, and even drawing tools. So, so how do you actually combine, right, these different types of technical analysis to formulate trading strategies, right? How do you do that, right? So this is what this section is all about. Firstly, understand the purpose, right, of your technical analysis, whether, you know, you're trying to define the market condition, whether you're trying to define an area of value, or whether you're using it as an entry trigger. You have to know the purpose of your technical analysis. Right? And that is something that we covered extensively over the last half hour. So for example, a few uh, concepts that I can share with you. Right? You can use Donjian Channel and ATR as a, a trading strategy. Right, Something that you can think about. For example, you know that the ATR indicator is good to help you highlight multi-year low vol volatility because you know that during a period of low volatility, right, you're expecting the market's volatility to pick up and if it does break out right you know you can expect a uh, quite a big move in the market so the atr indicator is useful to help you define this market condition 
Now, this Donchin channel, you know that it can serve as an entry trigger if it breaks above the upper band, breaking above the 20-day high or 20-week high, depending on your time frame. It can serve as an entry trigger. On top of it, it can also help you trail your stop loss, right, to ride the trend. So in this case, you can see that by combining these two indicators, you can buy a breakout, right, during a low volatility period. And if you want to write the breakout, if you want to write the trend, what you can do is you can use the Donchin channel, the low of the band, to trail your stop loss and exit somewhere here. So you can see that this is something like a, a breakout slash trend trading strategy, right? Buying breakouts in low volatility period and trailing your stops, right? To capture as much as of the trend as possible. So this is how you can actually use the Donchen channel and ATR indicator. And think about this, right? The reason why you can do this is because you understand the purpose of your indicator. If I didn't explain to you the purpose, if I didn't explain the concept behind it, right? You wouldn't even be, you wouldn't understand what I'm trying to do down here. Okay, so this is important. And this is a, it's a very good example to, to share with you on why you must know the purpose of your tools. Next one, right? Moving average plus candlestick. Okay, so... Okay, so just give me a... Okay. Moving average plus candlestick. So you can see that moving average, if you recall, it can do a number of things, right? Define the trend, define area of value. But at this point in time, I just want to point out two things to you. The moving average can help you define the trend. Okay, I don't have the 200 MA over here, but you can tell that this is in an uptrend. That's one. Number two, the moving average also help you define this uh, area of value over here. Notice, notice the price tested once, twice, and thrice. Okay, so we can see that this moving average clearly, right, help you highlight to you where is a potential area that you want to be buying. Okay, as for the candlestick, re recall, right, candlestick, they are useful as an entry trigger to get you into a trade, to trigger the trade. So over here, you have this bullish engulfing, right, to trigger you an entry. Number one, you have the trend. Number two, you're trading from an area of value defined by this moving average. And number three, you have this bullish engulfing pattern telling you that the buyers are in control and the market could possibly hit higher, okay? So this is another bullish engulfing pattern at an area of value trading with the trend. So you can see that again, how your tools come together, right, by complementing their, their purpose with one another. Another example, trend line plus candlestick, right? So again, trend, the trend is up, okay? Trend line acting, acting as an area of value, area of value, area of value, area of value, okay? Uh, bullish engulfing serve as an entry trigger to go long, right? So so this is actually a framework that I, I have, you know, taught, right? So this framework is what I call the Tay framework, right? If you want to use this framework, it's very powerful to trade with the trend. Number one, define the trend. Number two, the area of value. Number three, entry trigger. So the trend, right, can be defined using moving average or dungeon channel, whichever you want. Area of value can be defined using support resistance, trend line, trend channel, moving average, whatever you want. Entry trigger can be candlestick patterns, right, because they are so useful, right, like a bullish hammer, shooting star, engulfing pattern, right, tweezer top, tweezer bottom, and, and stuff like that. So this simple framework, right, whenever you want to trade with the trend, reference to this framework, right, and you really, right, can't go too far off. Okay, so another example. Again, this one again using the Tay framework. What is the trend? Right, the trend is in a downtrend. I don't have the moving average over here, but if you plot it right, uh, the price there's a good chance it's below the 200 MA, so the trend is down. Number two, area of value. Are we trading from an area of value? Well, you're trading at this area of resistance, right? So that's that's what we are. That's where we are at. And number three, do we have an entry trigger? Yes, we have. We have this tweezer top over here, right? Price rejected once. And rejected twice, right? Based on this uh, long upper wick on this candlestick pattern. So it's telling you that the price is re the market is rejecting higher prices in a downtrend at an area of value, which is resistance. So this is a possible shorting opportunity, right? To go short, right? You can have your stop loss, right? We can even pull out the ATR indicator and set our stop loss, right? One ATR above this high. So you don't get stopped out, you know, should the market suddenly spike higher and come down lower. So again, you can see how these different indicators tools and concepts complement one another okay uh what else head and shoulders right let's talk about chart patterns so you know that head and shoulders right it's uh telling you that there is weakness in the market so you can see that the market over here heads up higher retrace breaks out retrace try to hit higher could even retest this highs and then collapse lower breaking down below this uh this neckline then the market collapse lower Retest back this level, which this uh, is actually a previous support or neckline, now acting as resistance. So now, uh, how do we know that this level is going to hold? Well, candlestick patterns, right? This one over here, you have this one we call a bearish engulfing pattern, telling you that there is a uh, sellers are coming in, right? You can look to go short and again, have your stop loss, right? One ATR above these highs, right? And if you 
want to talk about trade management, right? If you want to ride the trend, you, you saw that earlier, you can use stuff like uh, Donjian Channel, moving average to trail your stop loss. So this is where you can add in the moving average indicator, for example, to trail your stop loss to ride a trend. So I hope by now you can see that how all these different technical analysis tools, right, come together to give you a more complete picture to help you better time your entry, better exit your trade, manage your trade, and to define the different market conditions that you want to trade in, right? So this is uh, so important, and I hope by sharing with you these few examples, right, it kind of, you know, go into your head. Okay, let's, so let's do a quick recap, number one, right? You have to know the purpose of your technical analysis tools. We have covered so much today. We have covered stuff like chart patterns, indicators, candlestick patterns, drawing tools, etc. And I break it down step by step, right? What are the purpose of these tools? So once you understand the purpose, you can then, you know, formulate trading strategies, trading plan, right? To trade the markets. And also, right, you can actually combine them, right? Like, for example, the last uh, few slides, right? We were combining different technical tools, right? To read the market and to even develop a trading strategy. So I hope by now you have, your head is filled with ideas on how you can go about, you know, trading the markets, okay? So with that said, right, I have come towards the end of this video. And if you want to learn more, where I suggest you go is uh, to my website, tradingwithrainer.com. Okay, let me just give you the link over here, right? Tradingwithrainer.com. Over here. So scroll down a little bit, right? And today we have spoke quite a bit about indicators, technical analysis, and, 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 and much more. So if you want to learn more about trend following, how to write massive trends in the market, go down and click this blue button, the ultimate trend following guide. You'll learn how to write massive trends in the market. Or if you want to learn more about price action trading, candlestick patterns, right? Uh, support resistance, market structure, go download this ultimate guide to price action trading. Just click this blue button and I'll send it to your inbox for free, okay? So I hope this video, right, uh, have helped you see technical analysis in a different light. I hope it helps your trading. And if you've enjoyed this video, uh, hit the thumbs up button, all right? I would really appreciate it and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can always get more stuff like this. So with that said, right, I wish you good luck and good trading and I'll... Talk to you soon.